Welcome to In Bed with Natasha. Luckily, I'm in bed with an American that's so understanding this morning. <laughs> and we were laughing about how the Italians pronounce your name, but that's getting old. So, yeah, so we'll exactly. We'll move on. <laughs> Jay Loman, Jay Loman, who yes, is an uh, artist. Yes, uh, American living in Milano. Yep, but yep. you first came in the 80s. Came in the 80s. Uh, I was in college in New York and I was modeling. Actually, see, I'm a stupid model, so I'm able to repeat these okay, things. Okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I didn't I'm, that. I'm used to this. You're not. Um, oh, I, I can be an, an actual actress. <laughs> um, yeah, I, was in, I went to Fordham and then I came to... Um, a lot, well, I came How did you Europe. get into modeling from America? Because people just always, you should model, you should model, you know, in, cut, in, New, in York? New York. And I'm like, all right, why not? And I went to, uh, my best friend Sebastian's brother was Avedon's assistant. Okay. okay. So Seb was into photos and he's like, I'll take your pictures. He, we went out in East Hampton, his family had a house, we took some pictures. I went to Zoli. Yeah. Which is no lo- no longer. No. So it was a huge. Yeah. I mean, it was huge, right? Yeah. Uh, she said, "Can you come back this afternoon?" And they signed a. I signed a contract that afternoon. Wow. And we, you had no idea what you were no, getting into. No, I had no idea. And that was the beginning of the end. <laughs> no, it kind of. <laughs> How long did you model for, or do you still model? I still do. You still do. Yeah. Yeah. You have I an agency did, here. And... I have an agency here. I have one in Germany. Wow. Well, you look um, fantastic. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Do you still enjoy it? I I enjoy it now. I didn't enjoy it then. You didn't enjoy it I then. I really felt like it. Really felt like I don't want to say meat markety, but you really felt. Um, did you have photographers take advantage of you? Yeah. You did. Yeah, and designers, and absolutely. And did you feel obliged to? No, no, but you knew that was the dr- I mean, you sensed that that was part of the equation. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, you know they were looking at your stuff, and you know, yeah, absolutely. That was and part I'm of sure, the deal. And I'm sure, and I sure, I'm sure, for women it was much worse. You know. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering on on set how much things have changed because people have this idea of the '80s being this really hedonistic moment, especially in Italy where there's cocaine on trays, champagne, and you know, yeah. alcohol around. Even on set, would would you ever find that on set with that no. kind of? That wouldn't be on no, set, so it's still no, boring. No, no, it was. I I think most everybody that I worked with was actually very professional. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was after for yeah. sure. Um, there was a lot of partying going on. Yeah. Absolutely. You said your Absolutely. first, the first party you ever went to was, or the first time you went came to Milan, you went to Gianni Versace's Gianni house. Versace's house for dinner, and it actually wasn't even a party. He was there with a the, in the dining room with a bunch of journalists, so it was a little more work oriented than party oriented. How was Gianni? Was he nice? Lovely. Oh, he was a lovely, lovely guy. Really lovely, and he had a partner, Antonio Domenico. Yeah. Um, they were like family. So they became quick, very yeah, close yeah, friends. Absolutely. I mean, literally, we had a very good friend who's no longer alive, Greg Jordan, who was a big decorator in New York. He said, you call these guys uh, when you get to Milan. And I did. And he, like immediately, it was like, we're having a dinner. Why don't you come over? And that was that. I mean, you didn't and, really know at the time, though. Uh, yeah, and my modeling, I actually never modeled. I, well, that's not true. I did a commercial for Versace years later. Okay? Yeah. But he did, it was, he asked his friends to do it. It wasn't. How come he never okay. asked you to model for him? I painted for them. Okay. That's the crazy thing. Okay. I painted Antonio's apartment part. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. So when did you get into painting? Had you ever done or had any experience well, with it my, before? Well, yeah, my father built a studio for us when we were kids. Okay. So we had, so like you had a, quite an alternative. <laughs> super alternative. <laughs> Your <laughs> studio? No, my like... parents were like super, uh, they look conservative. But my dad had like a bumper sticker that said question authority. Oh my okay. God, I love it. <laughs> so they look super straight, but they were a little kooky. So he built a studio for us. So we were always like messing around with painting. Paint and we had a potter's wheel and a kiln and all that stuff. But it, when did you think, start thinking about getting into it seriously? It was here uh, in Italy. Here in Italy. I did, because as I told you before in the other interview, yeah. um, I studied philosophy, which is another funny story, but... Uh, I think when I came to Italy, I really, you know, that kind of opened my mind. You inspired well, him? Well, here's maybe? what happened. The modeling, like, 
got me to travel. You know, I went to your, I went yeah. to Paris, I went to London, I came here. You start moving around, and Americans are very not egocentric, but they're very country centric, yeah. right? So they don't they think America's the best, and everything outside of America is crap, yeah. right? Well, that's not the case. You know that. Yeah. So it really that's what stimulated that art, yeah. art stuff for me. Who, which artist do you feel like you were inspired by? Well, really classic stuff. Okay. Like Kid and A's Day. Yeah. Actually, I thought, and that was actually a book that Johnny okay. gave me as a yeah. gift. Because I would just really like that, that black and white mm. draw, those sketches yeah. and that prison. It was just that sort of. But I never really had one artist that, that you were. No, absolutely not. I just would, I would see stuff and I'm like, oh, I can do that. Mm. So you just like invented no. it, just started yeah, totally going with invented, it. Invented. But you were saying that you were painting people's hopes. Well, so. I went to, so I worked for the, you know, I worked for Midale, did, paint, did the showrooms, and then a client of his uh, asked me to do her house, and then a friend that I'm, a woman that I met at a dinner was doing a villa near Alessandro, mm. and I worked there for two years. And what would you do there exactly? Uh, well, I worked with this guy and his son, and... You, they actually, what you learn to do is mix color, because frescoes are made with what they so call So you're culture, painting you know. frescoes yeah, in the whole... Totally, totally. Wow. But mixing the it's color... Like it's an impossible job. It's impossible. And mixing, like I would spend an entire day just mixing a color, because the colors, when they're wet, are the same, and then when they're dry, it's a different color. So it's really tricky. You have to be really, really inspired by this. Well, and you also have to know what you're doing. That's where you really learn to mix color. But this is such a different world from the modeling, the crazy oh, yeah, totally. partying totally. in Milan, then totally. to get into, totally. you know, mixing colors for fresco painting. I yes. mean, at what point did you never think, oh my God, I'm bored, or this isn't for me, or... Um, never. Never. You just, never. this is what your did, passion was. I just, I just did it. Yeah. Because it felt right. Yeah. I mean, I never chose a career. Did you choose a career? I mean, or no, do you... No, I guess when you I look fell back, into it you, as well. And when I look back, I'm like saying, oh, I've been doing this for 23 years. This is my... Yeah. This is what I am. Yeah. Like somebody always said to me, uh, you know, like there are, in New York, there are actors, but they're actually waiters. And it's like, well, what is paying your bills? The waiting table. So are you an actor or you're a waiter? You're actually a waiter. Yeah. Although you would like to be an actor, you're a waiter. <laughs> Exactly. And as I said, you know, before, like, I have lived through my art for 23 years. So I am an artist, which yes. it, it, I just realized, like, maybe last year, two years so ago. So that's a point, what, well, a point where you decide to call yourself, yourself an, an artist. artist. Which is an amazing impasse in life, Yeah, I think. But you now, know? I mean, obviously, you started then doing your own work, not yes, just painting. Absolutely. I, I, so when did I that start? So you spent uh, two years in painting these frescoes and other stuff. No, no, no I, I did that. I actually still have clients that I do you decorative do. painting for wow. all over the world. I've done stuff all over the world. Wow. I did like in Pittsburgh last year, I did a entry hall, this Malachite, but like yeah. blown up. <sighs> it's gorgeous. Wow. You no, know, it's beautiful. But that stuff I'll do for old clients or people that I've worked with before. Yeah. So. But the painting stuff, I got tired. It's exhausting, physically exhausting work. Okay? Yeah. So I wanted to start doing paintings, and that's when I started doing the collages. So that, so what you do today is collages, and you work They're, on canvas. Yeah, I work on canvas or like some supportive material, right? And I do, uh, I cut up books uh, and take, mani you know, advertising manifestations, soak them, and then... You bought something with you. Yeah. There we go. So this is the collage. So, look, so collage. this is working with so books. Look, this is book. This is books, and this is actually just images. And then they always have one single large image. Okay, but everything refers back in some way to that image. This is quite fifty. Yeah, so totally. Yeah, so absolutely. you were inspired absolutely. by yeah, it. Yeah, and and this is uh, is that like in all of the work or just in this piece? Like no, this just piece? in this piece. Okay. Okay, because actually this is uh, there are two of these that I did. One for a client. That this is not. The one that she's taking there, this is actually a commission piece. Okay. okay? Um, so it has to do with her and her age. That's why there's some of these okay. images. That's why it so has a So clients will come and ask you for something oh, that they want? Or they've seen something that they like and they're like, can you do that? Or we need it in, uh, we're doing a house there. We need something this size. Can you come up with something? Absolutely. Would you say that a lot of your clients buy your work 
as almost a deck like a decoration do they think of already the home and they think about your work how they want it in there and um because no, you I talk hope. a lot about the fact that you work directly with your clients yeah they would never say uh i mean i think i'm intuitive enough to know yeah. like okay if this is a gray room we're not gonna put a dirty yeah. green painting in sure here. um they suggest, they get, like, usually how it yeah. works is you're actually working with the ar their architect. Yeah. Okay, the architect will say, this is what the furniture's like, this is the fabric, come up with something. And then I suggest, in my way, how I do my stuff, let's do this. It's actually incredible you've got all these clients that literally just commission you to work directly, yeah. and then you work oh, yeah. with their staff and their team. Yeah. And the, are these clients that will buy you on a regular basis? Yeah, and then sometimes, like, I had a very good client, um, Partey, is that he actually, I started painting their homes. He and his wife yeah. were divorced. They got two apartments. I did that. <laughs> oh, did, uh, his and hers, he, did, he has an hers apartment. And then he actually bought my paintings. He's a collector. He bought paintings and sold them. He actually bought oh, my wow. paintings. He would buy my paintings and sell them to his buddies. Because he knew, I mean, it was an investment for him. Of course, yeah. yeah. yeah but absolutely. now, but you have a gallery as well. Yeah, a gallery, a gallery in, New in, York, New York. in New York. And here I have a woman, she's uh, what the, it's called a curator, yeah. and she has the clients and the artists. She yeah. has the pool of both, and she puts them together. But how many of these clients come directly to Jay, to yourself? Uh, like percentage rates? Yeah. I'd say 60% of That's my, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. That's a lot. I mean, I get some stuff, uh, maybe emails from yeah. my website, which is yeah. little. I've been published a lot, I think, and I probably in 20 years gotten one phone call from something that was published. Wow. Which is so it doesn't, so, mm -mm. so it's I've not public wondered, relations. Yeah, I've always wondered, like, all these, like, decorators and stuff, they want to get, and it's, it's kudos to your work. But do I you get think that. all that party did a little bit of magic? Totally. You know, like, meeting all these Look, great people, I, I always, fun no, person listen, to be around. I always told people, I would go to, like, I'd go to these dinner parties, like, fancy dinner parties, and my hands would, I'd always have paint on my hands, because you just, sometimes you just can't get stuff yeah. off your hands. Yeah. And they're like, what, what up? I'm like, well, I'm an artist. 99% of my work came from me socializing and meeting people at dinner. And they're like, do you want to come? Or are you interested in? Or seriously? Well, I'm like, I, I, I completely believe that because... Oh, really? Because right you're now. right. You make a connection. I don't know. I've always wondered, like, are people buying a part of me or are they buying a piece of my work? Or I, both? Think both, I think both, right? to be honest with you. I think that people like to, I think people love to interact and I think they love, if they like somebody, then a lot of the time they will also like to buy their work. I think the art market, when I was saying to you, it's split in different, different ways right. now because I was wondering why a lot of young artists that I'm meeting who are living in Italy, they just want to get out and want to be in London, they want to be in New York. Instead, you're choosing over New York here. and you want to be here because... You have a different market and you're working directly with your clients. Well, and I think it's what I said, what I tried to explain. I think if you want to be an artist that is, makes a ton of money and becomes famous and rich, you probably need to go to London or New York, yeah. you know, when you're young. Yeah, or, of course. Or Asia or Abu yeah. Dhabi or Dubai. If you want to just be an artist and that, because I'm not just an artist when I paint. I'm an artist when I cook. Yes. You know, it. it's... You t you know what I mean. Yeah. It's like it's in your it's it's everything you do. Yeah. So, for me, it's a life. It's yeah. not it's not something I do to make a bunch of money to go live, who knows where. You know what I and mean. And you feel just as creative in Milan as you do in New York. I oddly um I feel okay. I feel stimulated in New York because New York is stimulating. Yeah. I feel much all the excess upset. happening. It's, there's stuff going on. You feel guilty if you're not out doing yeah. something. Yeah. Here I feel much more stimulated artistically. Wow. Absolutely. Because you see, I mean, everywhere you look, the architecture, yeah. everything, the way people live, the way they dress, the way they eat, the way they think, it's, there's, it's steeped in culture. Yeah, absolutely. But then you didn't choose a city like Venice or Florence or Rome. That was the modeling. Yeah, the so modeling, it made you choose. <laughs> but then Milan is also, the... but you will, you have clients all over Italy. I well. have clients all over the world. Yeah. All over the world, yeah. yeah. absolutely. That you, mainly that you met here that during your time. That I met here, time. or I met in New York, or maybe I was in London, or they passed through here, or... Yeah, absolutely. So you said you're quite a party boy, but you don't party so much anymore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's so unfair. <laughs> I was no, trying to I get him to no, admit that he doesn't no. go to parties. Because I want I, him to come listen, to my party listen, more. Listen, I'm the first one to go dancing. You, you still go, like to go dancing. Go dancing. Yeah. yeah. And I'll go till six in the morning if the music's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Are you kidding? <laughs> Vodka Red Bull. <laughs> so, what? yeah, that's what you need nowadays, isn't it? A vodka Red Bull. Yeah. All right, yeah. then. We'll, we'll be getting you out dancing okay, very soon. Good. Thanks so you much for coming here today. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Bye. Bye.